got attracted a lot of attention. In his lecture delivered in Glasgow earlier this month, Professor Menon said many people voted to leave the EU to voice their discontent with the state of their lives. For many of these people, the issue at stake on that fateful day in June 2016 wasn't Boris Johnson's big red bus. It was whether or not their own crappy, underfunded, unreliable bus service was going to turn up at all. And so when, you were, when they were confronted with a choice between a status quo that was failing them and a future, an alternative future, however vague it was, and God knows it was vague, 17 million people plumped for the latter. Well, Professor Menon went on to talk about what needs to be done to unite the country and to prevent political instability. And he joins me now uh, from Oxford. Uh, Anand Menon, thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. Uh, basically, you were trying to find a bright side in, in, in Brexit for the country. Uh, did you find it? Well, what I was saying, I think, is, I mean, firstly, I should be clear, I wasn't saying that all people voted leave for that particular reason. I, I think I was quite careful in saying that I was dealing <clears throat> with a bunch of people that the talk was based on some people I spoke to in Newcastle. I wasn't claiming for a moment this was what all leave voters thought. But I suppose the silver lining, if you want to put it that way, is Brexit has opened up our political conversation. We're now talking about things, whether it's the North-South divide, whether it's inequality, whether it's the need for infrastructure in places outside the Southeast that we just weren't paying enough attention to before. So in that sense, it is an opportunity to think about what we were doing wrong before June 2016. But I mean, you had some uh, startling statistics, for example, on the amount being sped per, spent per head on public transport in London compared mm -hmm. uh, to outside of London. So what's the answer? Is it simply to uh, pour money into bus services between uh, villages in Newcastle and to stop uh, schemes like HS2 or Crossrail? Well, I think there are several elements. There are a lot of questions bundled into that. And let me be clear, first and foremost, this isn't about punishing London. London is an engine of growth. And London, of course, disproportionately contributes to the economics of the rest of the country as well through tax. But what I was saying is we need to... I think one of the problems in our politics, because our politics is so London-based, is that people tend to think as people in London do. And my point about buses wasn't that we shouldn't have trains, but it was there's relatively little consideration given by central government to bus services. And so while we're having a raging debate about HS2, we shouldn't lose from sight the fact that many people, and particularly many of the poorest people, tend to take buses disproportionately, and bus services all over the country are being act. act. So I think it's partly just about political attention and thinking through the fact that we are a big, complicated, varied country, and not everyone is taking the tube and the train every day. Do you think those ideas are being reflected in the Conservative leadership contest between uh, Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson? No, but uh, in a sense, I wouldn't expect them to be because the two candidates are talking to a very, very small audience at the moment. The only audience they care about is that audience of Tory members. And I think amongst the Tory party, the big issue is Brexit. So it's hardly surprising that both candidates are focusing very, very much on that. I would hope that whoever wins this contest, however, coming out of it, will start to think about some of these issues more seriously. And one of the other things about the referendum that's interesting is, of course, if you think back to July 2016, we had the remarkable sight of a Conservative Prime Minister standing on the steps of Downing Street talking about burning injustices, the just about managings and so on. So these ideas are catching on on both sides of the political spectrum. And yet, astonishingly, we had a debate in the House of Commons yesterday about child hunger in the UK, uh, led by Frank Field. So are those disparities, those inequalities, are we paying enough attention to them? No, I think what's happening is we are starting to talk about them more, but there is a long, long way between talk and action. And one of the most disappointing things, I think, about the last three years has been the complete lack of action when it comes to tackling some of these domestic problems that more and more people recognise we face. And what we need to be careful of going forward is avoiding a situation where Brexit continues to suck the oxygen out of politics and to dominate everything and we actually start governing again and taking some of the hard decisions to address some of these real issues. In that sense, um, Brexit's been a sort of distraction from the politicians from really doing their job then? 
It has been a distraction, yes. Uh, I mean, part of that was self-inflicted. I mean, personally, for instance, I would have liked to see Theresa May appoint a deputy prime minister for domestic policy who could go ahead and actually drive this kind of agenda forward while she was concentrating on Brexit. But we can't forget the real needs there are in this country while all sort of media attention and polit political attention is focused on what we're doing with Brussels, whether we're having no deal and things like that. There are other things to be thinking about as well. Kim, we are where we are, not an argument about whether Brexit was a good idea or not, but we, we, mm. we are where we are. What, in your view, for the political health of this country would be the best thing to happen now about Brexit? Well, the simple answer is to try and put it behind us as quickly as possible, because I think, for me at least, that the key issues in this country are issues about uh, the economic health of the country and particularly of some of the poorer regions. And the Brexit debate in that sense is a distraction. I mean, I'm, I'm not allowed to express preferences on Brexit, I'm afraid. But what I would say is the sooner something gets sorted and we move on, the better. And we could have an argument about which possible outcome will make sorting it the easiest. And I think there's a real argument to be had. But there is a trade-off. There's a trade-off between respecting the outcome of the referendum uh, and leaving the European Union will have economic consequences and not doing so, which will have severe political consequences. And as I tried to make sure in my lecture, the problems we face are both political and economic. It's about people not feeling represented as much as about people feeling that their lives aren't going as they should be. Professor Menon, thank you very much indeed. And you can find uh, that TED Talk uh, for free uh, on uh, YouTube. Just uh, put in Anand Menon and TED Talk.